Tina, and I'm the executive director of the CIVM Center for Biomedical Imaging. And we've been organizing these breakfast and science seminars. Actually, Mary Bach is the one who initiated them more than 10 years ago. And um, it's my great pleasure to uh, carry on the torch uh, for Mary and the community. And this is really a place where we share our um, latest research and uh, questions that we may have uh, for the community to, uh, to join uh, the groups or to um, really things that you don't know and to reach out. So it's really an opportunity to, to share. And last year we focused this breakfast and science seminars on uh, CIBM core members. And this year we wanted to focus more on the affiliate members, meaning the partners of the founding, ins the founding institution partners, uh, researchers. And so this year um, during the summer, we said, why not give a chance to the promising researchers of the future and leaders of the future, which are PhD students and very precious. And so um, we thought that the summer edition of the Breakfast and Science Seminar would be giving an opportunity to the PhD students to share uh, with the community. And so um, today, it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, two PhD students. The first who will be giving a talk uh, is uh, Jessie Mosso from uh, the LIFMET at EPFL. And she is co-supervised by the, Dr. Christina Kudalbu, who is also at, uh, at uh, EPFL, but in the uh, Animal Imaging and Technology section of the CIBM, and uh, also co-supervised by Rolf, Prof. Rolf Gruter. And so she's going to be telling us about new insights into brain energy metabolism in type C hepatic encephalopathy, a dual 18 FFDG PET and 9.4T 1H MRS preclinical study. Now I didn't practice that, <laughs> so I hope I did okay. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. The floor is yours. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, so my name is uh, Jesse Mosso. I'm a PhD candidate supervised by uh, Christina Kudalbu from uh, the CIBM and Professor Rolf Grutter from the LIFMET. And I thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to uh, present uh, our work today. So uh, my talk is entitled New Insights into uh, Brain Energy Metabolism in Type C Hepatic Encephalopathy, a dual uh, FDG PET and uh, proton spectroscopy preclinical study. So this is the, the paper we are uh, about to submit. So you see the different uh, co-authors and their contributions. So uh, I will go over the, the, the different names and contributions. So uh, Ting was a former member of the CIBM. She did the PET to Atlas uh, registration for this project. Carol, who is also a former member of the CIVM uh, a long time ago, she did the PET experiments. Dunya helped on the uh, analysis part, and Mario was the uh, vet in charge of the PET experiments. Uh, Valérie McLean is the clinical uh, HE uh, expert. Olivier Bresson is the biochemistry uh, expert. Christina Kudalbu is the hepatic encephalopathy and uh, protonscopy, proton spectroscopy expert, and she did uh, part of the MRS experiments that you see in this uh, project. And uh, Bernard Lance, the last uh, author, is the study designer and the PET and proton spectroscopy expert, and also did part of the PET experiment. So this is the outline of uh, my talk. I will uh, first introduce you to uh, hepatic encephalopathy and give you a brief uh, state of the art, then present the novelty of our study and our specific aims, then uh, go to the methods, results, and discussion. So for uh, the introduction first, what is a uh, type C uh, hepatic encephalopathy? So in the clinical uh, setting, it's a disease that starts with uh, chronic liver disease that will lead to a systemic inflammatory response with uh, blood and brain hyperammonemia. So in the case of hepatic encephalopathy, the liver uh, fails to detoxify uh, the blood from toxins and this toxin will eventually accumulate in the brain and lead to uh, what we call HE, so a severe uh, neurological and psychiatric decline. So what are the causes of uh, chronic liver disease that will uh, lead to HE? The, the first one is a viral cause, so uh, hepatitis, could be also alcohol abuse, primary uh, biliary cirrhosis, non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease and uh, diabetes, among others. Uh, so what is the, the prevalence and prognosis of uh, HE? So in uh, 2017, 10.6 uh, million people suffered from uh, decompensated uh, cirrhosis. And among these people, 30 to 40% had a chance to uh, develop a severe form of HE, what we call overt HE. And then the survival rate for this uh, patient is as low as 40% if they don't get uh, a liver transplantation. Uh, 
Additionally, it was shown that the neurological damages of hepatic encephalopathy are irreversible in uh, children, which uh, overall makes uh, this disease uh, uh, very critical. So to study uh, this disease, we use an animal model, which is called the uh, bile duct ligated uh, rats. So it's on male uh, wisdom rats. So we do uh, here a bile duct ligation that will lead to a uh, chronic liver disease after uh, six weeks of surgery. And the toxin will uh, accumulate in the, the brain and lead to an assimilated form of uh, hepatic encephalopathy. So what do we know about uh, CHE mechanisms uh, so far uh, in, in the brain? First of all, uh, we know that there is a strong increase in uh, brain glutamine. So uh, glutamine metabolism has been the main focus uh, uh, since the, 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 study of, uh, the beginning of the study of HE. And as a consequence, there is a osmotic response, so a decrease in the metabolites that are uh, uh, considered as uh, osmolites. So if we uh, zoom in on, um, on this metabolic diagram, we see um, I hope you can see my uh, mouse. This is uh, ammonia that is uh, in, the, in the blood and it's uh, created by the, the gut. And in a normal case, it's uh, extracted by uh, the liver into a urea. And uh, in the, so in the normal case, 80% of this uh, blood ammonia is uh, converted into urea by the liver and the rest is uh, converted by the kidney and the muscles. In the case of hepatic encephalopathy, the liver is uh, dysfunctioning, so this conversion into urea is not uh, functioning well, and uh, so ammonia accumulates in the in the bloodstream will then cross the uh, blood-brain barrier here and lead to uh, enter the brain cells, lead to an increase uh, in uh, glutamine and a decrease in the in main osmolysis response. So that's uh, one of the mechanisms that have been uh, proposed already. And there are still a lot of uh, unknowns concerning this uh, disease. And, and the one uh, uh, with uh, of interest today is uh, energy metabolism alteration. So uh, it's still debated whether or not uh, this alteration of energy metabolism exists. And so the, the literature on the topic is quite uh, controversial still. So uh, in the clinical uh, literature, uh, human pet studies focus only on minimal HE, so uh, a slight form of HE. And there is only one clinical case study in, uh, in chronic liver disease that showed the uh, glucose uh, hypometabolism in the cerebellum. In the preclinical uh, studies, autoradiography uh, studies report conflicting results for uh, glucose uh, cerebral metabolic rate. And MRS studies show uh, no change in uh, energy metabolites. And only one study reported the change for lactate. So overall, this is uh, these results are still uh, conflicting, and um, we will uh, we would like to use uh, a PET here to uh, to try to answer the, this question. So what is the novelty of our uh, study and our uh, specific aims? So first, we want to uh, combine uh, PET and proton spectroscopy to inform on uh, HE. So why uh, would we want to do that? So you see. Uh, here, the, the metabolic phase of uh, glucose, so this is the uh, blood glucose that is uh, transported into uh, uh, the brain through the blood-brain barrier, and then uh, is converted into a G6P by the ex exokinase and then goes through uh, the glycolysis. In the case of a PET experiment, we will inject uh, FDG uh, here, and uh, this FDG will uh, use the same transporters to be, uh, to be internalized in, by the brain and then converted by the same uh, exokinase to, uh, to give FDG 6P. So what do we measure with a, a PET experiment? We, we can measure the uh, arterial input function here, which is the amount of uh, FDG, so tracer, radio tracer in the blood over time. And we also measure the radioactivity density uh, map on the brain. So that's the, the PET image, central PET image. And it's uh, actually the sum of the FDG pool and FDG 6P uh, pools. So once we have this uh, measured, these two uh, information, we derive the, what we call here the CMR glucose. So it's uh, the net uh, rate of glucose that is going to the glycolysis. And uh, very importantly, it's a uh, dynamic information because it's, uh, it's a rate. And uh, this is what we want to, uh, this is the, yeah, the, the main uh, advantage of, uh, of the, the PET imaging. If we look at the proton spectroscopy on the uh, other end, it brings more uh, what we could call a static information because it's, a, it's an information on uh, metabolic pools at a given uh, time point. 
And uh, they, they are, these pools are located, these metabolites can be located at the beginning of the glycolysis or uh, further on. And uh, so it can inform on, uh, on a variety of brain functions. And depending on where the proton spectroscopy voxel is located, you can have uh, information on uh, uh, different uh, brain regions and the, the differences that could occur. So overall, we wanted to combine this uh, static and uh, dynamic information to inform on, uh, to, to evidence uh, energy metabolism and neurometabolic profiles uh, alterations in BDL rat if uh, there are any. The second uh, novelty of our study and the aim is uh, linked to the PET uh, methodology. So here I would like to uh, walk through, through uh, a small story of uh, how we uh, figured out the, the good quantification method to, uh, to use. Uh, so the standard quantification method for uh, uh, the PET study is the SUV, what we call the standardized uh, uptake value. This is the, the formula that is used for the SUV. So as you see here, the, that's the PET image, the brain radioactivity density map at labeling steady state. So it's uh, really the quantified PET image. And it's normalized by this factor. So it's a dose, injected dose of FDG over the weight of the uh, animal. So this method is uh, easy to implement because this is uh, these are straightforward to uh, derive. However, it's uh, it's uh, said to be only semi-quantitative because the dose of weight is uh, macroscopic uh, information. So to circumvent this problem, we decided to uh, implement an alternative quantification method, which is the CMR glucose. Uh, metabolic rate. So uh, this uh, has been first introduced by uh, Sokolov and uh, co-workers for uh, autoradiography studies, and it could also be applied to a uh, PET. So this is the, the formula that, uh, that we will use. And you see here this is the same uh, brain image at the labeling steady state. And what is uh, in addition here is the arterial input function. So that's, uh, as I mentioned before, the amount of uh, tracer in the blood over time. So now that we having this uh, two, uh, the, the arterial input function in, in addition, uh, this gives a fully quantitative uh, method for quantification. However, it still requires the uh, measurement of uh, this arterial input function, which uh, can be sometimes uh, challenging and uh, invasive. So this remains uh, the problem now. So the standard uh, procedure to measure the arterial input function or uh, uh, manual blood sampling or external uh, blood counters. So in both cases, you need to um, cannulate the, the rats, so the, the veins and the arteries, and the, it's uh, very invasive and the rat uh, generally uh, doesn't survive this uh, this measurement, so it's fully invasive, and it also exposes the the experiment to a radioactivity uh, compounds, radio labeled compounds, which is uh, in in both cases uh, detrimental. So, um, an alternative procedure to measure the arterial input function has been proposed by uh, Bernard Lance, who is the last uh, author of uh, this paper, and he proposed to uh, measure the uh, arterial input function from uh, a PET image which makes it uh, completely non-invasive. And it performs as well as a standard procedure. So I will describe a bit later how uh, we do this, but uh, this is the alternative that uh, we, we used. So overall, we decided to implement this uh, fully quantitative CMR glucose with uh, image derived arterial input function for a minimal invasiveness. And additionally, we, we realized a posteriori that the, this dose of uh, weight uh, factor that is present here in the SUV would be uh, meaningless in our study. And I will explain you why in the, in the discussion part. So overall, our specific aim too is to implement a quantitative glucose cerebral metabolic rate with an image derived uh, arterial input function for uh, minimal invasiveness. And then to register the, the PET image to an atlas in order to have uh, information on a specific brain region and to be able to more accurately compare with uh, proton spectroscopy. That was the second aim. OK, so now going to uh, the method of uh, this uh, project. So for proton spectroscopy, we use the 9.4 uh, variant scanner, which is here at the CIBM EPFL, a quadrature homemade surface coil. We use a special uh, sequence with an ultra short uh, echo time. Um, the vapor for water suppression, fast map for shimming, and the LC model for uh, spectral quantification. We scanned uh, two brain regions, so the hippocampus and the cerebellum, the spectra that you uh, can see here with the voxels, and uh, we could quantify 17 metabolites. Uh, the rats were scanned at two uh, time points, week uh, zero and week six post uh, surgery, and you see here the, uh, the numbers per week and per uh, brain regions. For the 
PET uh, experiment, we used this uh, avalanche uh, lab PET 4 scanner, which is also here at the CIBM at EPFL. And this is a time frame of uh, one PET experiment. So there is this uh, injection of the FDG bolus in the tail vein of the rat. And then for 45 minutes, we acquired the uh, arterial input function on the vena cava. And then for an extra 15 minutes, we uh, do a static acquisition uh, on the brain that will, uh, once we include the, the arterial input function in the formula, that will give uh, a CMO glucose uh, maps with uh, this uh, nominal resolution. So as I mentioned before, this is the formula that uh, we will use this. Uh, there are two terms here additional. So that's the CP, which is the blood glycemia measured at the end of the PET experiment in each rat. And that's uh, what we call the lump constant. So it's the uh, constant that accounts for the competition between uh, glucose and FDG for um, uh, transporters at the blood brain barrier and for exokinase. This is the arterial input function and this is the uh, static acquisition on the brain. After that, we did the PET to ATLAS registration in order to uh, really be able to compare with uh, uh, proton spectroscopy and be able to average these uh, CMO glucose values in uh, different brain regions. And we have uh, only one type one here post surgery, it's week six, and we have uh, 10 uh, BDN rats and uh, eight uh, sham rats in the study. So now for the results and the discussion. So uh, this is the proton spectroscopy results. So you see uh, on the left, you have the cerebellum uh, spectra and the right, the hippocampus. You have week zero at the top and week six at the bottom. And you see uh, displayed only the metabolites that show a significant change between week zero and week six. So what we can uh, see overall is that uh, there is an increase in glutamine at week six in BDL uh, rats, a decrease in uh, glutamate, a decrease in the sum of uh, osmolites, a decrease in GABA, and a decrease in ascorbate. So what can we uh, conclude from this uh, proton spectroscopy? So there seem to be uh, alterations in uh, diverse uh, brain functions. So first, uh, these uh, three uh, first metabolites are linked to the glutamine metabolism, which has been the main uh, which is uh, already known and has been the, the main focus. So uh, increasing glutamine, decreasing glutamate and decreasing the osmolites. There also seem to be an alteration in uh, neurotransmission because uh, glutamate and GABA are the main, two main uh, neurotransmitters in the brain and they are uh, both decreased at uh, week six in the BDL group. So uh, this, is, uh, this suggests uh, alteration in neurotransmission. Uh, this decrease in uh, ascorbate suggests a link to uh, oxidative stress because uh, ascorbate is an antioxidant, so uh, uh, it's, a, yeah, it's a link to uh, oxidative stress. And uh, additionally, for energy metabolism, which is uh, our interest here, we see that uh, total creatine is uh, decreasing. However, total creatine is also a part of the osmolite, so uh, uh, its role in uh, energy metabolism can be a consequence of uh, its decrease due to uh, osmotic balance. And now going to the uh, PET results. So we see here a typical uh, arterial input function that we acquired on the, on the vena cava. So in the, during the arterial input function acquisition, so the first 45 minutes, the FOV of the PET scan is here on the thoracic region of the rat. And then we, uh, this is uh, the vena cava. We put the VOI here and we measure uh, over time the, uh, the uh, activity of the tracer that crosses this uh, VOI. So this is a typical curve that uh, we could acquire. And uh, from this uh, example, we could reconstruct the CMR uh, glucose for, uh, this is an example for a BDL and this is an example for a sham rat. So what we can see already is that there is a glucose cerebral metabolic rate, which is lower in uh, BDL rats, seem to be lower, uh, seeing just uh, the slices here, over all slices. So that's the uh, first interesting result. Now we want it to be a bit more, a bit more quantitative and be able to compare uh, directly with uh, proton spectroscopy and uh, match the two uh, regions. So uh, we did this uh, PET to ATLAS registration in order to uh, be able to average the CMO glucose in the cerebellum and in the hippocampus. And what we see here is that there is a twofold lower uh, CMO glucose in the BDL group compared to the sham group in both uh, the cerebellum and the hippocampus. And this is associated with a previously reported so increase in glutamine, decrease in glutamate, and decrease in the main osmolites, as I uh, told you before. However, we can also additionally notice that the 
here for the protonal spectroscopy, you have a, a significantly stronger increase in glutamine in the cerebellum compared to the hippocampus. And uh, there is no significant difference between uh, the brain region as far as the CMR glucose is uh, concerned. So that's another difference. But overall, the, the PET, PET results show a clear energy metabolism alteration in BDR rats, and the proton spectroscopy result confirm the previously reported changes that are observed in the BDR rats. So now finally going to the discussion part. So this is uh, what I, I showed you uh, just before. So the CMR glucose lower in uh, BDR rats in uh, both brain region. And interestingly, if we put the SUV, which is the uh, standard uh, quantification method, and I reminded the, the expression here, we would have seen no difference uh, between the groups, neither in the cerebellum nor in the, the hippocampus. So a question here is, uh, why does this fail to account for uh, this difference that we were seeing in the, with the CMR glucose fully quantitative uh, metric? So to, uh, as an attempt to uh, answer this question, we, uh, we wanted to look at a bit more closely at the, the formula and the different terms in, the, in each formula. So for uh, the CMR glucose, this is the arterial input function here. This is CP star over time. And this is what is plotted here. One color is uh, one rat. And you see that uh, overall, the BDR rats have a smaller arterial input function compared to the, to the sham rats. So that's, uh, apart from this out layer here, uh, this is a quite strong difference. Now, if we look at the SUV, which, which contains the injected dose, so this would be the equivalent of the arterial input function for the SUV. The injected dose of uh, FDG between the two groups is, uh, is the same. So you see here, there is no uh, difference between uh, overall in, in the mean of the injected dose. So a question here remains is why, if we inject the same uh, FDG dose in the tail vein, why do we uh, measure a, uh, such a difference in the uh, arterial input function when we measure the, the bolus that crosses the, the thoracic region? So that could be explained. Uh, one of our hypotheses that we have is that uh, BDL rat have uh, uh, display some uh, systemic effects, so some uh, uh, lower metabolism, for example, or some some organs in the in the way of the of the bolus that may shunt the uh, the FDG bolus. So that could be a, a reason why we see uh, this difference. But this uh, hypothesis still need to be investigated. But this clearly shows that the, um, the if we had used the SUV, the dose would have never reflect this uh, difference in the physiology that is clear here that uh, we could, re we could uh, reflect in the CMR glucose. So a first uh, reason is that the dose from the SUV does not reflect the true tracer availability that is uh, accessible for the brain when a systemic effect uh, occurs, which is the case in, uh, which we suspect is the case in our uh, BDL group. Additionally, if we look at the second term in the formula, which is here CP, so I told you it's the blood glycemia measured at the end of the, the PET experiment for each rat. You see that also the blood glycemia is very different between very different between the two groups. So the BDR rats have a much lower uh, glycemia in average compared to uh, the sham rat. And now if we look at the second normalization factor in the SUV, which is the weight of the animal, we see that there is no significant difference between the weight of uh, the average weight of uh, the BDR group and the sham group. So again, if we had used here the SUV, the dose of a weight normalization factor would have never uh, bring uh, the difference that we, we observe here in physiology uh, in blood glycemia. So this is the second conclusion here. The, the blood glycemia is not taken into account in the SUV and the, is, a, is a physiological effect and is lower in the BDL group. And the weight does not reflect this uh, difference in uh, blood glycemia. So overall, we concluded uh, a posteriori that the SUV is a biased uh, metric for us uh, because uh, we compare groups where the, the physiology uh, greatly differs. So that's uh, another uh, point to, uh, to, use, uh, uh, to, to emphasize the importance of uh, using the CMR glucose, which is, which is fully quantitative. So as a conclusion, uh, we could say that uh, we uh, develop a first uh, PET, we propose the first PET uh, proton spectroscopy in vivo study in uh, BDN rats. And we propose a quantitative mapping of uh, CMR of glucose uptake with the CMR glucose using uh, this non-invasive uh, image-derived arterial input function. And we also propose a atlas to um, PET to atlas registration for a spatial mapping of glucose uptake. 
and accurate comparison with uh, proton spectroscopy. And uh, for all of this, uh, for these uh, two uh, second steps here, we will uh, we are working now on the on a tool to uh, combine uh, these two steps and uh, make it make this tool available for uh, uh, CIBM uh, collaborators. Concerning the pathophysiology, we uh, showed with uh, proton spectroscopy, we confirmed the result that were uh, already observed that there is an increase in uh, brain glutamine and decrease in the main osmolytes in the cerebellum and the hippocampus. However, we could draw no clear conclusions on uh, energy metabolism, just looking at proton spectroscopy. And uh, going now to the PET results, we showed uh, what is uh, maybe the, the new uh, the, what is the, the main discovery of our uh, study is that uh, there is a two-fold lower brain uh, glucose cerebral metabolic rate in BDNL rats versus uh, control rats. So overall, it paves the way for uh, new insights on the role of glucose metabolism in the pathophysiology of uh, HE. And with this, I would like to thank my uh, the, the Bernard Lanz, who is the head of the, the project, and uh, Christina, and the BDL and uh, VET teams, as you see here on this picture and uh, two uh, founding uh, agencies. And I thank you very much for your attention and uh, I welcome uh, every question. Thank you, Jesse, fantastic talk.